Uh, this evening, uh, I think you've all gathered because we're going to be talking a little bit about an outlook for the future of the Adyar estate. Uh, this Adyar estate, which is the home to our Theosophical Society, which is the place where really this movement took a firm root and then spread out into the 70 plus countries in the world that it now occupies, is something that is of great importance to all of us. And so we just want to go into some things about this estate and about some of the ideas for how it can be treated and how it can be treated moving into the future. Just on the most surface sort of level, I'm not aware if all of you know, this campus that we call Adyar, our Adyar home, comprises 257 acres. Uh, just to put that into perspective, Hyde Park in the middle of London is just about 100 acres more than this. This is a huge space in a city of 7 million people. It is also very valuable to this city in the sense that it provides something that no place else can. Actually, this space that we're in now is the second largest green space in all of the city of Chennai. Everything involved with the regeneration of the air supply and the supply of like vital energy to the city of Chennai comes from this place and one other, which is actually a national forest, the Ginde National Forest. So it's regarded as one of the lungs of the city of Chennai. All sorts of different sorts of butterflies are here. Many of you I see walking around with cameras, taking photos of the different wildlife that is here. We have species of birds, species of insect, that you can travel all around the city and you'll find none of them. They're all here. So it's an unusual place just in terms of its wildlife and in terms of the regard in which it is held by people here in the city. On a regular basis, we have botany. There's one botany course that comes from a university nearby that has documented the various flora and fauna and the changes in those over a period of years. So this is a very special place to the city of Chennai. And that's great. But I think our concern is more so with its value and its importance to us as theosophists, as the home of the theosophical movement. So, to us, it has a very different sort of value. Uh, beyond just the historic buildings that are here, I honestly don't know if many of you know how forward-looking the Theosophical Society has been during its history here at Adyar. I mean, just in terms of the structures that have been built. Leadbitter Chambers, down that way, was the very first reinforced concrete building, concrete and steel building, built in the entire subcontinent of India. The first theosophical society looking ahead. During Annie Besant's time, the press that operated here was the most modern press in all of India with the very finest equipment. This is the sort of uh, impulse that has always come from the Theosophical Society. So we have wonderful buildings here. We have wonderful estate. The more important part about it, though, is, of course, not the buildings. Neither is it the trees. Neither is it the butterflies. All of those things have their place. But the most important part about this place is the part that I think we resonate with most. The idea that this has been termed the master's home. That where we stand now and where we walk, <clears throat> wherever we walk around this campus, are places where 
the feet of such people as H.P. Blavatsky have walked those same steps, Colonel Alcott, Annie Besant, and in various of these places were times when the masters themselves were in those places. This is a very special place with its own special energy, which we come together each year with an opportunity to feel together, to resonate with together, and to magnify together. So this is, you know, this is our inheritance, and it's a wonderful inheritance. One of the things with all things that we can speak of as a form, which is to say the buildings, the roads, the places where all of these great people among us stayed and lived and walked, is that it is the nature of things physical that they degrade. If you don't believe it, check your own body in the mirror in the morning. It happens to us. It happens to buildings, it happens to roads, it happens. And so we find ourselves now with this wonderful estate, with this wonderful heritage, but it's a heritage that, if we're going to be completely honest with ourselves, is in decline, physically. It does not affect the spirit, but then again, maybe it does. Maybe it does. And so, at this point, being in the sort of position that I find myself, I start to feel that it is, on my part, it would be irresponsible for this decline to not be addressed. Something has to be done with it. And that something can consist of a couple of things. It can consist of us saying that it's fine, let it continue. That's one decision. No decision is a decision. Another way it can be approached is to say that this place is in fact of value to me, to me as a member of the Theosophical Society to me from what it has been able to give to me and from what has come from this place out into the world and to say that based on that, this is some place that I will commit to helping to bring back. And so that's the nature of the idea that we're going to discuss for its future. I have been in this thing as in everything here, very fortunate with the level of support that has flown, that flows in terms of all of these sorts of ideas and all of these projects for the enhancement of our movement. Uh, Mikhail Haas, who you're going to be hearing from, who is actually the person who will be doing most of this program, I had never met Mikhail. He lives in the Netherlands at the International Theosophical Center in Narden. Last year, when I traveled there for the first time, we met, had an opportunity to talk. It turns out that his father was once asked to serve as the treasurer for the International Society. Was it by Sri Ram? Oh, okay. And so, you don't mind if I tell the story, do you? No. <laughs> okay. His father had said, that he was going to come to Adyar to serve in the position of treasurer. And I don't think his mother was very much in agreement with that idea. So he said, well, either I'm going to go to Adyar or I'm going to die. And what was it, two weeks later? Very short time later, he passed. <laughs> so it wasn't meant for him to be, but he comes from a theosophical family. Mikhail is an architect of quite some prominence and note, which I was aware of his uh, reputation. It preceded him when we talked, and he offered to volunteer his time, volunteer his services on a regular basis to come to Adyar and develop a plan for its renovation. And he has been true to his word. 
I came to find out as we were working together in this project that the king of the nation of the Netherlands, he had to leave here one point during this project to go back to the Netherlands because he was being knighted by the king for his work in sustainable architecture. So it's not your run-of-the-mill sort of person that you're going to be hearing from here. So anyway, I have said enough about this, but I want to turn it over to McKeel so he'll be able to actually show you from the point of view of the person who is the architect with that sort of information and that knowledge. So I'll turn it over to McKeel Haas, please. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Are you sitting comfortable? Good. About 30 hours ago, we looked together through our presentation. But as you can image, in 30 hours can happen a lot. <laughs> He's still sitting comfortable. <laughs> I got some ideas and changes some things. Here you see Michael Haas's renovation team. That's not me alone. We have a team working here and Manoj is also here. There is Manoj, another member of the team. And another member of the team isn't here because she is ill at home. But we will see her. I changed just my position because Tim is always doing promises. <laughs> and as he did last year, he said, I promise next year, that means now, we have a new roof. Well, we have a new roof. There's some problems, but we will find a solution for that. This year, he said, we have new archives next year. What do you think I have to do? <laughs> I have to look that we have next year new archives. So I think my function is look that I get the promises he makes. <laughs> what I couldn't know is that I got a WhatsApp this morning at 3.42 from my lovely eldest daughter, Anjali, mother of three kids. That's very early, even for me. So I awoke, and at that moment, the third law of Michael about sleeping started doing its work. You don't know that third law, but I will explain that. The third law reads, if you are awake in the early morning, you are awake and won't sleep anymore. I see I have an old version of the presentation because you won't sleep anymore was also on it, but okay. You always have to improvise, so I just go on. So my brains started and came with some ideas. We have a big audience about 800 to 1,000 people. On New Year's Day, the judge with the unpronounceable name came up with the idea. So we raise the donation of our mobile to 1,000 rupees. <laughs> the fund, I'm sorry, Praia, but the fund is now going to the renovation, only this evening. <laughs> I'm afraid. Oh no, we start just calling. I'm afraid I couldn't organize a volunteer team so quick. So I ask two volunteers to come to the stage now. Please. I have one volunteer there, Patricia. Can I have another volunteer? Just 
just come if you are a volunteer. Oh, I have already, I'm sorry, I have already two. So count with me. Thousand rupees times thousand people means one million rupees. Only for the Indian people, that means 10 lakh. It cost me a lot of time to know that. Of course, we have to improvise. But if not everybody gets cold now, half enough is also good, then we, have, we can do the renovation of Shantikunje. There is the, that's a pity we fail something in it, but this is also an improvise. May I give that to you, both? Oh, it starts already. <laughs> Lily. <laughs> So, Lily, thank you, you was very quick. So, Tim is paying the first thousand rupees. I'm turning it off. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lily, thank you that you were so quick. <laughs> the next, I would ask Helma, my lovely wife at home, to phone me now. Otherwise, I will turn it off. <laughs> They just uh, go and sit there. <laughs> he has to pay. <laughs> you know that the live connection takes always a little bit time. I can't help that. A, uh, I think there's about two, three minutes between it, between the moment that I say it and the moment they can see it. So I hope she will call. That's somebody else. Oh. Hi. Hi, lovely. Oh, yes. Thank you for I can pay now. <laughs> so, you see, I have also 1,000 rupees somewhere. <laughs> you see it? And this is what we want at the end, huh? <laughs> so, I have a question to the people in the world. Can you please call <laughs> all the people here in the audience and don't put your phone off? <laughs> that means I can sit and wait. <laughs> and I will do. Fifty to ten lakh in one evening is not bad. Did you turn it off? <laughs> oh, okay. Now, in that case, you want to hear what I have to tell about the renovation. That's okay. But then you turn it off now. Otherwise, the next time, it is 2,000 rupees. <laughs> and the third one is 3,000 rupees. There's somebody. Oh, look. I have two wives. <laughs> I didn't know. Hi. <laughs> okay. I get lots of... Uh, questions, but I turn it off now, otherwise I can tell the story. You just can go on uh, looking for the people who want to donate. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, that's too late. So, oh. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> I thought you were counting in rupees, but you're counting in dollars. Perfect. Everything is welcome. I go on. An outlook 
on the future of the RDI estate. If you look on Google Earth, then you see this. This is the RDI River, and this is our estate. With headquarters, that be the chambers, and all the buildings on it. If I come with the plane, I see this if I sit on the left side of the plane. And if the plane is coming from the right side, this time it didn't. <laughs> so this is an old one. This island is still on, is not anymore on that place because of the floods. <laughs> this is an old map. A map from, I think, 64. 1964. And we made a new website just about the renovation. On this website, called The Elephants, is everything you want to know about the renovation. All the plans are on it, etc. I just walk through the website with my presentation. Of course, it starts at home. Every website starts at home. This is the home. And I hope you will see on all the websites all over the world in the Theosophical Society, this logo. That logo, the elephants, will be the link you can point on and then you are going to the website from the renovation. And when you are at home, you find this as the first um, site. Then we go to, you see here, we go to the project. And you see this. And we say, Tim said it already, it looks like and it feels like you come in paradise. Here. Every time when I come, I have the feeling I'm coming to the paradise. Really. And I will show you all the paradise we have here together. You all recognize this, but are you aware of the paradise? Every day, every day I walk here around with my camera and I see new, new beautiful things. It was yesterday, Makaka, and I had my arms full with uh, very special strobe wafels, and it was a little bit, I was a little bit afraid, can I pass them with my strobe wafels, or do they want it? Well, I could pass. But it is also a paradise and decay. I will show you the other side. I'm sorry about that, but I have to. This is the other side of the headquarters. This is a river bungalow. This is the roof inside from Blavatsky bungalow. It's also Blavatsky bungalow. Still Blavatsky bungalow. This is Let Peter Chambers. And I can show you hundreds of photos like this, but I don't want. You want to look forwards, not backwards. So when my wife Helma and I came here in January last year, we had, I was already, we have both been here before, and we had the feeling we will find 20, about 30 buildings on the estate. But then Maya told me there must be about 100 buildings on the estate. I couldn't believe Maya. And then I got from everybody lists about what is here on the estate. Now put all these lists together 
And I found out that we have at least 116 buildings at the estate. From these 160 buildings, I visited already 105. Still, there are 11 buildings I've never seen, and I don't know where I can find them. So I hope that somebody is here in the States who, who can help me to find. You can? I come to you. Thank you. <laughs> I have your list, <laughs> but I don't know where every building is. So we do. And it is quite clear that we can't renovate all these buildings at once. Shall I take this away? <laughs> that means we have to look for a kind of prioritizing. And we will do that. We made a system for the prioritizing. And I show you short, it is also on the website, so I can go quick through it about the prioritizing. It is based on. How is it used? Is it daily used? Is it regularly used? Is it seldom used? Or is it empty and without any function? It is also based on cultural or historical value. We have monuments, we have historical buildings for the TS historical because people lived in it. We have valuable and useful buildings, we have valuable but without a a function at that moment, we have not variable and we have not variable and without function. So that is all we can rate. And then we have based on the condition. Of course, we have building. Well, of course, not. some buildings are in acceptable condition. I don't have any building in a good condition yet. We have reasonable condition. We have poor condition and we have a, a very poor state. And that's always a ruin. From this together, you can give points, and we get then uh, a priority, the AA. We have to do as soon as possible something. We have the A, we have the B, the C, and the D. And the, and the D priority means just break it down if you are so far. That is hard to break a building down. So we won't do that if it's not really necessary. Here's the list. And you can't read it. I just want to show you that we have a. a, a I'm sorry? You can't see me? Oh. Is it okay? No. <laughs> I can't see you. You can't see me. No. Well, <laughs> take care. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> I hear a telephone. <laughs> Two thousand rupees. Okay, this is the list, and this list is going on, and on, and on, and on. So you see, it's a, a long list, a huge list. And this list can summarize 160 buildings visited, 105. Um, 32 buildings are in use, 35 are residential, also in use, of course, and 28 are not in use. We have a AA priority 6, a A priority 11, a B priority 36, a C priority 49, and still three buildings without any worse, and once we will break them down. These are the six AA buildings. <coughs> it starts with the Besant Bungalow, Blavatsky Bungalow, Headquarters, Let be the Chambers, Raja House, and Sevasirama. But still, we don't have the money and the possibilities to start with six buildings. So we took off this one. 
for now. Next period we go on, and we took off this one, Savas Rama. So we go with this four, four buildings we start. I want to say something about our philosophy. That's the next page in the website. That looks like this. And the philosophy is that important that I want to read it. The, the Theos Theosophical Society as a worldwide movement always was an early adopter of new developments in society and the world at large. And since it carries a great responsibility towards our planet, it would be appropriate if it starts playing that vanguard role once again. It is both possible and challenging to show members from all four corners of the globe, people in India and all other world citizens, how one can renovate and maintain those impressive monumental buildings on the Adia estate in a sustainable manner, recognizing our obligations towards Gaia, Gaia the Earth, and future generations, accepting our accountability. It is our objective to make all of the Adia estate energy neutral, cleaning our own wastewater and reusing it, thus demonstrating how humans can live in sacred communion with nature, realizing that there is but one life. I have a mic. I'm sorry, was it not clear enough? Then why did we call the website The Elephants? That's a nice question. Well, as a symbol of strength, the elephant inspires us to be strong and patient at the same time. It relies on consciousness, thought, and patience to meet all its needs. And of course, we have elephants here. And I have personally something with elephants. And when I was the first time here, not the first time, but the first time I came for this job, that means January 2015, I went swimming in the sea, Sea of Bengal, and I got a huge gulf over me. And afterwards, I had an elephant in my hand. This one. So, that must be a sign. And that's why the website is called The Elephants. The next page is about what did we do already? Of course, not too much, but more than you think, perhaps. Well, we had the rainwater harvesting implementation in April last year. Last year. So nice to say that, last year. Just a few days ago. <laughs> we did Raja House, the middle floor, where Idarmas is living now. We did the Besant Bungalow, the upper floor, and Maya is living now. We got new mattresses from the New Zealand, I think, uh, uh, people. And I have to say, I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy it. <laughs> so thank you. We did measurements of four buildings, the four buildings with our AA category. We finished that already. We started with the theater roof. We nearly finished it. And we had trimmed the great banyan tree. Of course, that is very, very difficult to do that. But we had a problem. The holy great banyan tree and the Blavatsky bungalow clashed a little bit together. And it was very clear that it, is, it wasn't possible to go on in that way. But how can you stop that? So we decided we will meditate on the great banyan tree, under the tree, and ask her, can you find a solution for this problem? And the banyan tree gave a solution. It's also on the website, you can read it there. The solution was quite easy. I couldn't think about it, but the, the angel of the tree 
put her rope over the tree, but without the branches were, were going to the Blavatsky bungalow. They left that, uh, she left that out. So that was the sign that we could cut that. So we did. This is what you hear, see here, that is before that we trimmed the banyan tree. So she was really going over Blavatsky bungalow, treating Blavatsky bungalow. Now it looks like this. And we ask, of course, the tree, don't go back in this way, but go look for the other way, because otherwise we have to do it again. And we don't want to work in that way, we want to work together with nature. Our plants, of course, we have lots of plants, and not every plant is already uh, uh, um, ripe enough, is to, can you say that? That we can publish it, but, but the that what we publish, we will, go, will do. This is about the archive. We will um, put together the library, the research center, and the archives to one huge, beautiful research center. And for that, we need also some new places. In the library is place for the workers, but we need an archive place where we can put all the archives in a, in a way it's we don't have to be afraid when the Adia River is coming up that we have problems. So on this place, it is the back side of the library, you could think about something like that. That doesn't exist anymore at this moment. But it will be clear that when we sit here next year, I will show you real photos of it. Renovating the headquarters. It is beautiful on this side, but when you look on the other side, it's really something else. These are termites. Termites are eating our headquarters. But not only the termites are eating our headquarters, we also have problems with leakage. We have problems with water coming up from down, dampness. You see here on both sides of Leadbeater. And also, when we do headquarters, well, you better go on just with Raja House because that's nearly one. So we also do renovate Raja House. The next plan is Blavatsky Bungalow. When you follow the School of the Wisdom upstairs and you look upstairs, are you still sitting good then? Because it is not good. It is, well, you can sit there, of course. <laughs> I won't say we have to change that, but not for long. We really have to, to do something there. Look here. This place here is a real place problem. And then we have Let Peter Chambers. Also, it looks very nice from the outside, but when you go inside, you see there are problems, real problems. And another problem with Let Peter Chambers, it is about 100 years old, and then you came with your family and all those people, so you had big rooms. But now you come alone or with two, and you would like to have a little bit more privacy when you are in that uh, place. And also, it would be nice if there is a good bathroom, these things. So we have to renovate it and modern, make it a little bit more modern. And our idea is that we can make 56 um, rooms with an own bathroom and a toilet. And 28 rooms can have also a kitchenette. We have done two suites for the, the bigger families. And we have the rooms on the top floor, probably with air conditioning because it is quite hot there. Um, we need new staircases because we will use the staircases in the backside. We never use, but they are, they are there. 
uh, to make bathrooms for the rooms on the back side. Also, we put, put solar panels on the roof to make it energy neutral. And we will also clean our own wastewater when we start with lead meter chambers. And that could look like that. It's not a very nice. This is how it is now. This is the, the room. Here is the bathroom. This is, I call this a kind of kitchenette. That is also, um, and then we have here the staircases. And then you have the next room. And when we do the same, we, we close this here between. So you have a room on this side, and you have a room on that side. And these staircases, we make bathrooms. And in that case, you have a quite easy way to change it. Uh, you don't need to change the outside of the building that looks the same, but it inside is much easier and better. We have some other plans, a smaller innovation of the ground floor from Olcott Bungalow, because it is in a bad stage and it is also good when Tim and Lily can have their own uh, guest there and when Tim has an office at home because here he don't have the privacy to have a good office and then he can also have some people at home. So a home office, that's, that's one of the small renovations. Another small renovation, and I saw you really donated already a lot of it. I'm, well, we will see if we have enough to start a renovation of this. There's also a small renovation. These are the plans for the first five years. We have a 20-year plan, so that means there are following, again, five-year plans. Just like the good communist did, people did, they made always five-year plans, and we do that also. We have also some ideas how we can go on. One of the ideas is that we have get our own info center. Info center at the main street, just at the place where, where is now the social welfare, but then on the gate side. It could look like this, but it must be from semi-permanent, because otherwise we need, after Indian laws, to ask for a permission, and when we ask for a permission, we will need years and years and years, people told me. So if we do it semi-permanent, we don't need that permission and we just can start. Good idea. That means we do it from old sea containers. But you can make old sea containers very nice, as you see on this. Can be inside also very nice. These are two sea containers. And then we have the idea to make this big estate, 257 acres, for the people who think in hectare, there's more than 100 hectare. Um, we would like to make the whole estate as a kind of a museum. Open to the public. 3,000, thank you. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> what we would like to do is also, oh, and again, we would like to, to show people if you want to, to look at the places where our Olcott, Besant, Blavatsky lived and where they met the masters on the roof. And perhaps it's also nice to, to have a look in the place where uh, Krishnamurti used to live. So we have lots of beautiful things to show, but we don't show it to the public. We even don't show it to us. Sometimes it is allowed, you can see it, but just always have the feeling, well, if you have good connections, you will see it. <laughs> we have also beautiful archives. This is in the library. We have more than 40,000 leaves, um, palm leaves. This is huge. We have the, I think, the smallest Lord's Prayer in seven languages. That big, and you can read it when you have, when you look through this. 
And we have in the museum also these things. But we have this also in the museum. And we don't show it. But people who, who learned about the Theosophical Society and read about what Madame Blavatsky did with this teacup, would beautiful to, to look and see it yourself with your own eyes. Please, make, make it open. But also the whole estate. We think that you can have, when you come in the gate there or in that place, you can uh, have an app on your iPhone or whatever. And then you have a number, for instance, tw number 21 for that bit of chambers and you put on 21 and you get the short or the long explanation in the language you want to hear it. It's quite easy. And if you, if you can attract people to do that and come to here, perhaps you can attract people to become once a member. Well, this was a, I told a little bit. But perhaps is the step to become a member a little bit too big. So we thought of, perhaps we should make friends of Adyar. You just walk around here and you see well, it's beautiful, and I would like to know more about it, but I'm not so far that I will be a member, so I become a friend of Adia. As friend of Adia, you get the email newsletter, you get information, and perhaps it will bring you so far that you are interested and you go to one of some meetings. And perhaps then you will become a member. Instead that Tim every year is telling we have 25,413, was it the right? <laughs> 913, uh, but it has increased a little bit. We will tell it will increase, and not a little bit, it will really increase, because we have so much good things to tell. Just about the website, who is who? Well, that's me and Helma. You can read it. People who know us knows this is Helma and me. This is about Manoj. Manoj is sitting there, but he looks like that. And then, if you want to have contact, you can contact us. Quite easy. You will find us. And then, at last and at least, Tim, stage is to you. You want to go so, or you, or you don't know what get, what you get. <laughs> well, I want to thank Mikhail for uh, sharing some of these ideas that have been developing over the course of the last year now. Uh, as you see, a lot of the ideas are, as with many things, what you want to try and do is reach beyond what it is you can grasp. And so I have encouraged Mikhail and anyone else, let's reach far. And in the meantime, there are going to be things that we're going to have to address. I think he spoke to you about, initially, about our four initial priorities. It's going to be impossible to think in terms of addressing every single building on the estate, and probably that won't be necessary. But there are certain buildings that have come to be associated with what it is that we do here, the headquarters being one of them. And so all of these things, as I said, we have choices to make. Some of them appear to be obvious in the sense that because this is a place with such a history, and this is a place with such a future, there, the structures are going to need to be addressed. So the initial starting point is going to be with those buildings that we named, four of them. The headquarters building, Raja House, which is connected to the headquarters, Blavatsky Bungalow, which is where we conduct the School of the Wisdom every year, and Leadbeater Chambers. 
All of them are beautiful structures, heritage sorts of structures, and all of them are really in danger of being compromised just as physical structures. So that's where we're starting off. So what we're going to be doing in that respect, from the Theosophical Society's point of view, the idea of fundraising is one that is if I'm going to be quite honest, it's a foreign idea. And it's one that probably, in a lot of countries, it's something that people take for granted. But the problem that I encounter, and that probably it's similar to a sort of problem that you might encounter in your lodges or in your federations or in your groups. What I find is this. There is the ageless wisdom and there is the beauty and the truth and the power of theosophy. There is the functioning of the theosophical society and the structures that we maintain in order to try and be a channel through which the world can come in contact with this ennobling wisdom. The theosophy doesn't require a cent, a pie, a lira, a euro. Theosophy needs none of that. The Theosophical Society and the structures that are involved with that, it's an unfortunate circumstance, but every good idea has a price tag that is attached to it. You have lodges. You know that uh, people don't come to the lodge for nothing. So we find ourselves in that situation just like your lodge, only on a much grander scale. And also because these things have been allowed to go down to such an extent that now we do have to address it in an immediate sort of fashion. So what we're doing is this. The idea is that in terms of the way that the Theosophical Society has functioned historically, when there is a need, the answer to that need appears. That's the way it has worked. And that's the way this process works. Sometimes, however, it is important that at least among our members, that the nature and the scope of that need needs to be brought to your attention. So that's the whole point here, that there is a need that is becoming all too obvious. And the need will need to be addressed. So this is what uh, this fundraising process will involve. Uh, the, just in talking about this to other people, before we have even formalized the process, already there's a response. And I feel quite confident that this is something that we will be able to do and move forward with. I do believe that this, uh, this place has a value to our membership and that our membership will respond. So as we go forward, the way we're going to be doing it is this. Here in India, we're going to be certain that there is an account to which our treasurer will maintain and anything that is given toward this can come from India to that particular account. In Europe, we have established in an, uh, the same sort of account at the American headquarters of the Theosophical in America, there is a similar thing. So those would be things that you'll be hearing more about as we go forward. Uh, anything else to say about that? Yeah. The amounts that we are looking for for these four buildings is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of about one million US dollars. Sounds like a lot. Uh, already we have commitments for about $150,000 of that, so more than 10% is already committed. So that's something that uh, there are a lot of ways it can be approached. People who feel as if this is something that they want to become involved with can do it in small amounts over periods of time, can do it in anything that's available for you to be able to do. Everything will go toward this one project. Uh, there will be a very transparent sort of reporting that will be part of the website that uh, you visit for this. So all of this will be part of the entire presentation for the, 
for this renovation. So these are the ideas. This is the need. And it wouldn't be right for us not to share that need with the members who are a part of the TS. So you've had a chance to hear it, and you'll have a chance to watch it as it comes into being. Uh, we're just now beginning, but I think the history of the Theosophical Society uh, supports the idea that we have something to offer to the future. Katie. I can say this, that in terms of the problems that we have with the building, age is always a problem. Anything that ages needs attention. Here, the, I can't call it our enemy, but the thing that degrades these buildings more so than anything is water and humidity. Every single problem we have practically is a result of water in some way or another. Water soaking up from the ground into the building, water coming from above and infiltrating into the building. Is there a way to that? That's part of the process, yeah. Yeah, that's part of the process. So with that, Mikhail, any final words or? No. Nope. All right. So you have heard, and uh, now I leave it up to you all. So thank you for being so attentive, and thank you for listening. We'll see you in the morning. Thank you.